welcome to lecture series EPG Padasala for Computer Science. In this lecture, we will be discussing development and quality plans, learning objectives, outline the objectives of quality and development plan, describe the various elements of development and quality plan, explain how development plans and quality plans are useful for internal projects. Major content of this presentation has been prepared from the textbook Software Quality Assurance from Theory to Implementation, authored by Daniel Galil, Pearson Education Limited, 2004. Introduction. A project needs development and quality plans that are based on proposal materials that have been re-examined and updated are more comprehensive than the approved proposal, especially with respect to schedules, resource estimates and development risk evaluations. Include additional subjects absent from the approved proposal prepared at the beginning of the project to sound alerts regarding scheduling difficulties, potential staff shortages, problems with meeting contractual milestones etcetera. Milestones are nothing but targets of achievements, objectives of development plan and quality plan. Scheduling development activities leads to the successful and timely completion of the project and required manpower, resources and budget. Human resources play a major role in timely completion of the project. We should identify the right person for the right task. Next point is recruiting team members and allocating development resources. Development risks have to be resolved, required software quality assurance activities must be implemented, provide appropriate data needed for project control. Elements of the development plan, project products, project interfaces project methodology and development tools, software development standards and procedures, the mapping of the development process, project milestones which are targets of achievements, project staff organization, development facilities, development risk, control methods and project cost estimation project products. The development plan includes the following products, design documents specifying dates of completion, indicating those items to be delivered to the customer, software products specifying completion date and installation site, training tasks specifying dates, participants and sites. Project interfaces, project interfaces include interfaces with existing software packages, interfaces with other software, hardware development teams that are working on the same system or project, interfaces with existing hardware, project methodology and development tools. Project methodology and development tools have to be applied at each phase of the project, appropriate methodology and development tools have to be identified. When evaluating the suitability of proposed project methodology and development tools, one should take into account the professional experience of the staff, including the subcontractors, personnel, even if temporary. Software development standards 
and procedures. A list should be prepared with respect to the software development standards and procedures to be applied to the project. Let us now discuss the mapping of the development process. Mapping of the development process involves providing detailed definitions of each of the projects phases. These descriptions include definitions of inputs, outputs and the specific activities. Activity descriptions include an estimate of the activity duration. These estimates are highly dependent on the experience gained in previous projects. The logical sequence in which each activity has to be performed has to be identified. This includes a description of each activity's dependence on previously completed activities. As an example, you cannot start the design phase prior to you completing the analysis phase. The reason is the deliverable of the analysis phase is the software requirement specification document, which is a legal contract between the client and the developer. Only with the help of the software requirement specification document, a designer can arrive at an architectural design and a detailed design. Simple example, if you are developing a relational database schema for an application, the database designer must understand the functional requirements, which means what data has to be stored in the database. Once the database designer has gained domain knowledge on what data has to be stored in the database. As a first step, the designer must model an entity relationship diagram. Second step, the entity relationship diagram has to be mapped to relational database design. Third step, the designer has to check for normalized design. After completing this, the designer probably quotes the design in a relational database which is requested by the client. Similarly, once uh, detailed design is over, this design has to be mapped into code. So, you cannot start your coding phase before you complete the design. We are aware software is uh, developed as modules. Once a module is complete, the module can be tested independently. Here we need not wait for the completion of the entire software. So, it is important to identify which activity has to be completed before start of another activity. Certain activities can take place in parallel. Certain activities can start only after a set of activities is complete. This relationship has to be identified. That is what I have mentioned the logical sequence in which each activity is to be performed, including a description of each activity's dependence or previously completed activities has to be identified. The schedule has to be accordingly prepared. The type of professional resources required and estimates of how much of these resources are necessary for each activity has to be identified. You cannot ask the designer, the programmer and test and the testing team to be available at the same time. Only after there is a considerable progress in design, the programmer can start the programming task. 
once a few modules are completed, the testing team can come into picture. So, with respect to time, activities have to be carefully scheduled. Several methods are available for scheduling and graphically presenting the development process. Gun chart displays the various activities by horizontal bars whose lengths are proportional to the activities duration. CPM and PERT enables the calculation of earliest and latest acceptable start times for each activity. The difference between start times determines the activities scheduling flexibility. Project milestones as I have mentioned milestones are targets of achievements for each milestone its completion time and project products documents and code have to be defined. Project staff organization, organizational structure has to be identified, professional requirements have to be identified, number of members per team has to be identified. The number of members per team depends upon the complexity of the project and the technology involved in the project. The names of team leaders and team members have to be identified. Organizational structure, definition of project teams and their tasks including teams comprised of a subcontractors, temporary workers have to be appropriately identified and documented. Professional requirements, professional certification, experience in a specific programming language or development tool, experience with a specific software product and type and so forth has to be identified and documented. Number of team members, it is expected that teams will commence their activities at different times and the team size may vary from one period to the next depending upon the planned activities. Project staff organization, names of team leaders and team members, difficulties are expected to arise with respect to the long term assignment of staff members to teams because of unanticipated changes in their current assignments. Therefore, the names of staff are required to help keep track of their participation in the team. Consider an example, a project is initiated in January 2017. It is expected to complete by August 2017. It may be delayed by 2 months, which means maximum the project can extend till October 2017. The same team has been assigned to a project which should start by November 2017. The project in which the current team is working is delayed further by 3 months. This affects the start of the next project which is scheduled prior to the completion of the current project, which means there is an unexpected delay in the completion of the project. So, the entire plan to execute the project changes. The organization has to identify a new set of team members. The major problem is staffing, identifying the right person for the right task here. Development facilities, required development facilities include hardware, software, hardware development tools, 
office space and other items. For each facility, the period required for its use should be indicated in the timetable. Development risk is state or property of a development task or environment which if ignored will increase the likelihood of project failure. Typical development risks are technological gaps, lack of adequate and sufficient professional knowledge, staff shortages, unanticipated shortfalls of professional staff, interdependence of organizational elements. The likelihood that suppliers of specialized hardware or software contractors. Control methods in order to control project implementation, the project manager and the department management apply a series of monitoring practices when preparing progress reports and coordinating meetings. The progress of a project has to be closely monitored. If there is a lag in the progress of a project, the reasons for the lag in the progress of the project has to be identified correctly during the initial phase itself. If not closely monitored and the reasons behind lag is not properly identified, schedule slippages will occur. Towards the end, due to time pressures, if the project is delivered, the project will not be a quality assured product. So, one important measure that has to be taken initially itself, identify the cause for lag if any. That is why I have stated in order to control project implementation, the project manager and the department management apply a series of monitoring practices when preparing progress reports and coordinating meetings. Project cost estimation, project cost estimates are based on proposal cost estimates followed by a thorough review of their continued relevance based on updated human resource estimates, contracts negotiated with subcontracts and suppliers, elements of the quality plan, quality goals, planned review activities, planned software tests, planned acceptance tests for externally developed software, configuration management. Quality goals refers to the developed software systems, substantive quality requirements. Quantitative measures are usually preferred to qualitative measures. They provide the developer with more objective assessments of the software. Performance during the development process and system testing has to be identified. Planned review activities. The quality plan should provide complete listing of all planned review activities, design reviews, design inspections, code inspections. The following has to be identified, the scope of the review activity, the type of review activity, the schedule of review activities as defined by its priority and the succeeding activities of the project process. The specific procedure to be applied, who is responsible for carrying out the review activity, planned software tests, the quality plan should provide a complete list of planned software tests with the following designated for each test, the unit integration or the complete system to be tested. 
unit testing, integration testing or system testing. The type of testing activities to be carried out including specification of computerized software tests to be applied. The planned test schedule as defined by its priority and succeeding activities of the project process has to be prepared well in advance. Identify what are the specific procedures to be applied and who is responsible for carrying out the test. Planned acceptance tests for externally developed software, a complete list of the acceptance tests planned for externally developed software should be provided within the quality plan. Items to be included are purchase software, software developed by subcontractors, customer supplied software. The acceptance test for externally developed software should parallel those used for internally developed software tests. Configuration management, the quality plan should specify configuration management tools and procedures including those change control procedures meant to be applied throughout the project. Configuration management has an impact on quality. As an example, a schedule has been prepared, milestones have been identified, the software product is in the testing stage. The customer comes out with a set of changing requirements. When the customer comes out with a set of changing requirements, the manager of the project who is responsible for managing the configurations or managing the different versions of the software must first document what changes have to be made. Next, feasibility of implementing the changes have to be identified. Feasibility whether these changes will have an impact on the schedule has to be identified. Above all, whether these changing requirements have impact on your data design and your application program or these changes have impact only on your application program has to be identified. The cost related to these changes have to be estimated. Again, as I have mentioned, the change can be either in your data design or application program or both. Appropriate human resources have to be identified. And one question that has to be addressed is, will you be able to deliver the product within the schedule or whether an extension in schedule is required. Because in practice, when you talk about change, your, you will have to modify your requirements document, then your design, sometimes both your data design and your application design, then your code, then you will have to test whether change in one module has an impact on another module. All these requires time and cost, development plans and quality plans for small projects. The development and quality plan procedures applicable to large projects cannot be applied to small projects. Cases or situations where neither development nor quality plans are required. 
has to be looked into. Cases or situations where the decision to prepare the plans is left to the project leaders discretion has also to be looked into. Cases or situations where development and quality plans are obligatory should also be looked into. Advantages of planned small projects over unplanned small projects. A more comprehensive and thorough understanding of the task is attained. Greater responsibility for meeting obligations can be assigned. Easier for management and customers to share control of the project and to identify unexpected delays early. Better understandings in terms of requirements and timetable can be reached between the developer and the customer. Development plans and quality plans for internal projects. Internal projects are intended for use by other departments in the organization or by the entire organization. In this case, no external body participates as customer in the development. Internal projects can be of medium or large scale. Benefits with internal projects, software development departments can enjoy the following advantages of plan preparation, avoiding budget overruns. This is of special importance where the profit center system is applied. Avoiding damage to other projects caused by delays in release of professionals occupied in an internal project. Avoiding loss of market status, especially regarding the firm's reputation caused by delayed completion of external projects triggered by late completion of internal projects. Internal customers can enjoy the following advantages, smaller deviations from planned completion dates and smaller budget overruns, better control over the development process including earlier identification of possible delays that enables the search for and resolution of their causes. Fewer internal delay damages. The organization can enjoy these advantages, reduced risk of market loss, reduced risk of being sued for late supply of products, hence reduced penalties for non-compliance with contract demands, reduced risk of impairing the firm's reputation as a reliable software developer, reduced risk of requesting a budget supplement. To summarize, preparation of full scale development and quality plans are highly beneficial for the implementation of both internal and external projects. The elements of development and quality plan, major software risk items and process of software risk management have been discussed. A project needs thoroughly updated, comprehensive and well prepared development and quality plans that help in addressing problems that deal with estimating resources, scheduling difficulties, meeting contractual milestones, etcetera. As a concluding remark, careful planning has an impact on the quality of software product that is developed. Careful planning will avoid schedule slippages. I acknowledge the authors of the books which I have referred and the web resources I have used for this presentation. Thank you.